I am so lucky that my first conversation back from a month long vacation is with the one and only Anna Kelly. How are you doing, Anna? I'm great. It is so good to be back with you. I'm so glad you had a great vacation. We did. We did. And the very first conversation I want to have coming back up is about really, it's about a word that I think was your word of the year. I think it was two years ago and it's three yeah. short letters and it's, it's, it was simply joy. And it hit me probably halfway through our vacation or our trip. Cause I'm not calling it a vacation. Cause I don't have, I don't need, I don't have vacations anymore. Right. Like our trip. And all my interactions with the folks in Malaysia and Indonesia, and specifically the kids, all I saw was joy. And I love that. It, it left me feeling great, but it also left me perplexed because I don't see or experience that level of consistent joy in America. Mm. And you and I would probably undoubtedly, if we were asked, you know, they, they, they were, they were poor. I mean, it just right. at least poorer than us by comparison, but when you measure life by happiness, which is something I often do, I, I mean, I, I often say, if, Hey, if you're working the 40, 40 life and you are truly happy, you win. Yeah. I mean, I'm here, th I'm here, you know, just riffing with you thinking a lot of them have won. Right. If they're truly happy and joyful, they win. And yes. it's 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 confusing to my brain. So I'll, I'll leave it there and see if you have some thoughts or questions, because I, I saw a lot of joy on it. I really did. Yeah. Yeah. I I love that. I love that. You know, oftentimes we think of of other countries and we think they're not doing as well financially as we are in the United States. So we must be, you know, doing really well. We, I mean, I think a, a salary of just over $50,000 a year puts us in like 1% of the world's income, you know? And so like we that, think, yeah. oh, these other countries are poor. They must have a lot of you know, poverty, they must have a lot of sadness because of that. And there is definitely some of that. I've seen that in different parts of the world. But I think it goes to show us that, you know, money doesn't bring joy. Um, money kind of draws out who you are um, at the core. And it it makes sometimes it more um, obvious, a reflection of, of kind of who you are and what's inside. But I think also just having gone from from poverty in the United States to, you know, middle class to wealthier, um, sometimes more money comes with more problems, right? And more things that we get stressed out about and, and keeps us from being able to relax and feel just the freedom of what just normal living can, can bring in terms of joy. So maybe, Michael, it's because we have more problems as we, you know, search for more financial freedom, we kind of become um, enslaved to the burdens that come with that to some extent. So maybe that's part of it. Um, I also wonder, do they have the same level of internal conflict as we've had in the United States recently in terms of arguing and worrying about, you know, COVID and politics and wealth gaps? Do they have much of that in those countries that you visited? Yeah. So I don't know. Right. Um, I don't know Malaysian or Thai or any of those languages. And, and they tried with English, which was amazing to yeah. see. Um, but uh, given, you know, there it's a very. Um, they have very different religions, right? There's there's Hindu, there's um, Muslim, there's all these other Buddhism. It, it didn't it didn't seem now maybe my interactions are with you know, different sets and maybe they didn't mix. I have no idea. Mm -hmm. um, but one thing that I thought was, again, just sitting here thinking back to all the joy that I saw was it was togetherness, right? It, like the kids yeah. would be together. I think the smallest group we saw was five, sometimes as big as 20. I don't remember. And again, you know, my experience is very, very small, but they weren't really alone. Right. There wasn't even just one or two of them. There were always a, a, a group. Mm -hmm. And I remember growing up in a very poor environment in the 70s. And, you know, we had our little neighborhood kids and we were, you know, I was outside before the sun came up sometimes and, you know, give us a ball and we figure it out. And um, maybe maybe today when we're kind of hiding on our phones in our, you know, 
basement or wherever it is. And we're not in our, maybe it's just, we're not around the people. And maybe yeah. people brings joy. I, I don't know. What do you think? I, I think that's a really good point too. You know, I think togetherness to, to your point, I think there's a couple pieces of that. One is just, are we, are we in a society that, that makes us want to spend time with people and, and get out and be with people. And, you know, I, I heard my parents talking about neighbors, you know, neighbors used to know each other. They'd be out for walks as families in the evenings, they'd sit on the porches and their kids would run around. And now we hardly know our neighbors because of the busyness of, of our culture and our world. You know, I, I know for me, um, I, I, I have to make myself get out there, right? So I go to conferences and things like that to really get interaction and church. Um, but beyond that, you know, in the United States, we work and then we've got a few kids and we're shuffling all of them to their evening activities. And we're, you know, basically if, if you're like me, you're carpooling, you're sitting at stadiums. So you're just not um, outside a lot because you're constantly doing stuff. And maybe that's part of the, American dream and the, you know, your kids need to do X, Y, and Z after school and be busy 24 seven. When they are home, my kids are like, I, I've been around my friends. I've been at sports. I've been at school. Okay. Parents will be around you, but then they just want time to just be by themselves and, and kind of edge. So I think that's part of it. And then this culture of even friendships, I, I even have to push my kids like, okay, you're texting your friends, but did y'all talk today in school? Yeah. What's going on? And they're like, oh, I don't know. We, we don't talk much in school. We just text. And so, mm -hmm. you know, they're, we're in a so, very social media world where relationships, especially with the younger kids, I see it as a mom, it's more digital than personal. And so maybe mm -hmm. that's part of it, Michael, because you just don't get the same level of, happiness and relationship when you're not hugging each other and having a meal together and doing those kind of things. Yeah. Then the other thing I was left with, um, really kind of thinking about this, I thought about this a lot on the plane ride back. Cause it's like 14 hours or whatever the heck it was. Yeah. And, um, money or some kind of net worth or whatever, whatever your number is, that does not equal happiness. And and I've known that for years, you can be an mm -hmm. unhappy millionaire. But again, when I go back and I replay in my head, those kind of just scenes of just looking at them, right? Because you would see them coming, right? You were going to them or they were coming to you. And just a little buzz, almost hive like bees, just happiness, just the scrum, you don't really know what they're saying, but you know, they're happy. And, um, it's not a money thing. It's not a net worth thing. I, happiness is an internal thing. And, right. you know, you, you brought this to me two years ago when joy was your world, but I didn't get it until I was on the plane back from Singapore going, wow. okay, I, I, I get what, what, you know, Anna was chasing with that word. So yeah. bring us home. Tell, tell us why, why joy is important. And it's not about money. It's a, it's probably everything yeah. else around that. I, I love that. I love that you're able to come home with that perspective. I know when I've traveled um, and, and been in other countries that are poorer, um, they really impacted me as well. So I did some mission work in Russia um, when I was in my early 20s, and I grew up poor. But when I saw the, the mass poverty and the level of poverty there, it was like, wow, I had I had it so good even growing up on Section 8 housing, right? And it, it definitely changes your perspective on life and gratitude. And so I think one of the things that I tell my kids all the time, I, I have some that are naturally happy and optimistic and find the glass half full. And I've got about half my family that naturally finds the glass half empty. And I think we're in a culture where we're constantly striving to be better, do better, have more. And sometimes there's this discontent that unless we get there, um, we'll be happy then, we'll be better then. And so I think it's really a, an important internal thing to your point that we can choose to be grateful for what we have while we're pursuing all that might, you know, that we want in the future. But I think just getting in the habit of saying, wow, I have so much to be thankful for. Um, sometimes it is important. And if we just focus on the things that are going well, what we do have in life, instead of comparing to what we don't have yet, um, for me, that helps me to reframe my mindset to have more happiness and enjoy. And it's something that I, I tell my kids all the time, like, be it's a choice be happy with where you are 
have gratitude and and making a list of the things that you're thankful for um i think make a big difference too to realize wow i have it so much better than i really let myself think um and it becomes a state of mind and so for me even having that word joy it was not just like okay i'm going to get more joy it was let me reflect on all the good things that i have um and and day by day the good things the bad things the hard things um to choose joy to choose that I'm going to be happy for the things that I do have and not so focused on what I don't have yet. So I, I, I think that that's probably some of what they have. They, they're not focused probably as much on social media comparison where you aren't yet. They're just living life and, and being grateful for what they have. So great reflections. Yeah. Anna, do me a favor. Where can people follow you? Great. You can find me here every week now that you're back on my playlist on the channel. You can find me on social media at Anna Kelly, REI Mom, and my website, REIMom.com. Thank you so much.